Good afternoon. Page 193. Please stand and join in singing our gathering hymn, which is number 621 in Breaking Bread. Lord, whose love in humble service, song number 621. Lord, whose love in humble service for the weight of human need, who upon the cross forsaken offered mercy's perfect deed. We, your servants, bring our worship. Consecrating to your purpose every gift which you impart. As we worship, grant us vision till your love's brimming bring light. Till the Good afternoon. We welcome you all as we gather on this uh, 18th Sunday of the year in ordinary time. We offer this Mass for Gertrude Noonan, 23rd anniversary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear friends, let us call to mind our sins, asking God for his forgiveness. You came together, all nations, into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to lead us to holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Grant this through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day, the people to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them, to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp. And when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, what is this? But they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, this is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord.
My reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learned Christ, assuming you have heard of him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new self, created in God's way of righteousness and holiness of truth. The word of the Lord. does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you. You were looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you. It was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Have you ever had the occasion to engage in a conversation with another person and you're diametrically opposed? Your opinions are completely opposite of each other. No matter what you say, no matter what you do, neither party is willing to listen or to accept the other's point of view. We've all experienced that, right, somewhere in our life. I think it happens almost every day in Boston when a Boston Red Sox fan gets into conversation with a New York Yankee fan. Happens right there. You'll never convince a Red Sox fan that the Yankees are better. End of conversation. I had a situation a couple of years back where I was in conversation with a person whose opinion was dramatically different than mine on a particular issue. And so we entered into a conversation. 
But for whatever reason, I didn't lose my composure. I was able to articulate myself in a way that, to this day, I hope it sunk in. See, the topic was not about the Red Sox and the Yankees. The topic of our conversation is about the real presence of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. I began the conversation very calmly, looking the person directly in the eye, and the person gave me the courtesy of listening. I said, that little host that you see is the true presence of God himself. That little host that you see is truly Jesus Christ. It is not just a sign or a symbol. It is not just a representation. It is truly God himself in our midst. God become man. And I went on to say it all began with the Incarnation, where the angel Gabriel came to the Blessed Virgin Mary and told Mary that power on high will overcome her and she will become pregnant, a miraculous event, with the Son of God. And so at the Last Supper, the flesh that Jesus was talking about as he took the bread was the very flesh that came from the Blessed Virgin Mary's womb. Jesus was fully human, fully human in every respect. He had to learn everything you and I have to learn. He had to learn how to read and write, to play, to share his toys. He had to learn everything that we do, except he did not sin. But Jesus was fully human in every aspect of the word. And that is the sacrifice made at the Last Supper, where Jesus said, take and eat. This is my body. He didn't say, this is a symbol of my body. This is a representation of my body. This is my body. And the blood that came from Jesus as a human being, the blood that came about through his birth from the Blessed Virgin Mary is the blood that he was referring to at the Last Supper. He said, take and drink. This is my blood. The important point for us is that this incomprehensible gift that God has bestowed on humankind is truly God himself. You see, the Eucharist is God made man. In the fullness of his divinity, the Eucharist is God made man. In the fullness of his humanity, but they are in perfect harmony. One does not overwhelm the other. That's the great mystery. Jesus Christ is fully human and fully divine. A gift that our, God, that our Lord and our God gave to us is part of the plan of salvation. The question before us is, why did God our Father give us the Eucharist? Let me give you a couple of reasons, something to hang on to and think about every day, most especially when you're preparing to receive Holy Communion. God our Father gave us the sacred body and blood of his Son in the Eucharist in order to share his divinity with you and I. We actually share the divinity of God himself. God gave us the Eucharist is the only source through which we can become holy. God gave us the Eucharist because God wants you and I to become one with him. When we receive the sacred body and blood, we become one with God himself and with each other. That's the mystery of our faith. So the question before many people, including my friend in conversation, what are the effects of Eucharist? How do you know? Well, several things happen. When you believe 
from the depths of your heart that that little wafer of bread is truly the body and blood of Christ. And as you receive it regularly, faithfully, certain things happen that are unexplainable. We begin to transform interiorly. We begin to become a reflection of Christ himself. The old saying, you are what you eat, well, that applies to the Eucharist as well. We participate in the reign of God. Through the Eucharist, we become agents of God himself, through which we go out and spread the good news to others, like I was trying to do to my friend. You see, that transformative power that our Lord gives us through the Eucharist, will help us during encounters where people are struggling to believe. The words will come, the actions will come, the prayers will come. So we've become a true reflection of Jesus Christ himself. We become an agent of the kingdom of God. We become one with God and one with each other, such that we begin to think different. We begin to think less selfishly. We begin to act less selfishly. <coughs> Excuse me. We begin to think about what's best for my neighbor rather than what's best for me all the time. Something happens mysteriously but joyously. We become a different person. We become a person of true and authentic love. We become a person that God himself created us to be. See, the Eucharist is our spiritual nourishment. Just like our physical bodies need fresh fruits and vegetables and hydration, so does our interior self. We receive the Holy Eucharist at least weekly, some people daily. It's that spiritual nourishment that God bestows on you and I. Think about that. God himself comes to dwell within you. And as you believe, it transforms you into a true child of God. At the end of our conversation, my friend was polite enough to, to listen to me babble on and on. And at the end of the conversation, he said, Dan, I still don't quite get it. I can't get my head around this. But I'll tell you one thing, compared to the guy you were as I knew you growing up some 20 years ago, you have in fact changed, my friend. You have become everything you described. My friends, it happens. It's true. We live in a very difficult world. We live in a world that in many ways is very dark. But Jesus gives us his sacred body and blood such that you and I become the light of the world. See, God doesn't give up on humankind. God gives himself for you and I, such that the gates of hell shall not prevail against him. God asks us <coughs> to participate in his plan of salvation. God equips us. God works through us in order to bring more souls to eternal life. May we please arise to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. 
and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered dead and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophet. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the day. The Prayers of the faithful. As God's holy people, we acknowledge his kindness and faithfulness throughout the generation as we bring our own needs before him today. For the church, may the gift of the Eucharist nourish our souls and help us work together to seek the fulfillment of the reign of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who exercise authority, may the Holy Spirit guide them in right judgment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For refugees who have fled their homelands for safety, may God grant them relief to the kindness of his people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the participants of the outreach program to Kentucky, that was canceled due to COVID. May they find other ways to continue to serve their community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the beneficiaries of the outreach to Kentucky, may the Lord protect and sustain them to those around them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elders of our community, especially those who are isolated, may the Lord grant them perseverance in faith and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Joan Hale and Richard Rocky, whose funerals were held this week, and all the dead, may they be welcomed into the eternal banquet of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Gertrude Noonan, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions of those who have asked for our prayers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers as we all say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sins, now and at the hour of our dead. Amen. Please be seated. Our song for the preparation of the gifts is number 368 in Breaking Bread, Bread of Life, song number 368.
My dear friends, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Amen. Graciously sanctified it gives, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of these spiritual sacrifices. Make of us an eternal offering to you. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right. it is truly right and just, a duty on our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you love in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you that by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, and give it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. In song, let us proclaim the mystery of faith.
celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you intense giving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Sean our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of these family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you as they are passing from this land. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Continue to pray as Jesus taught us, our Father, who was in heaven, our name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread of earth, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not on into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Believer us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of the Father, Lord Jesus Christ, to say to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Is with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Dear friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus Christ who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But then they say the word and my soul shall be there. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Our communion hymn is song number 323 in Breaking Bread, I Received the Living God. Please join in singing song number 323.
O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment done. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment done. Jesus, I love you. All I have is yours. Yours I am and yours I want to be. Do with me whatever you will. Amen. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. And do have a very wonderful week. Our song of sending forth today can be found in 325 of Breaking Bread, I Am the Bread of Life, song number 325. I am the bread of life, you who come to me shall not hunger, and who believe in me shall not thirst. No one can come to me unless the Father beckons, and I will my flesh for the life of the world and if you eat of this bread you shall live forever you shall live forever and I will I will be